So I want to take this list and I want to flatten it because I just want a list of views. I don't need you know, them by what type of view they are. Node. Okay, so now that we have our flattened list, all those views that are coming out of our original node back here. And so the first thing that we need to do is we need to decide if the view is on a sheet or not. We'll do that with get parameter by our elements are our flattened list and the parameter that we're looking for is sheet number. So this is very similar to what we did in the previous exercise, but we're going to take this a step further. And so whether it's on a sheet or not, we use the is x equal to y again. And our x is our sheets. And then, of course, just like we did previously, it's the triple dashes goes into there. And then we do the filter by Boolean mask. This is the mask. And our list is going all the way back to our original flattened list. So we'll run this, hit run. And what comes out of this node is two lists, one of views that are on a sheet and one of views that are not on a sheet. And then we're going to change the view use group parameter based on this right here. So the element, we're going to set parameter by element. So element set parameter by name, and then coming out of the in, that is our working views, views that are not placed on two sheets. And that gets plugged into the parameter value, because that's how we're going to classify these. And then the parameter name is view use group and that plugs in there so it's getting a little messy but kind of straighten this out a little bit and so now we've got that set but now we also need to set it up for the ones that are on sheets so we'll copy that down by using control c this is still view use group and actually what I can do is delete that and just plug this one in there. But this changes to layout views. And that should do it for that. Yes. So that puts them into the appropriate view use group. But then for all of the view type groups, that's going to be different based on whether it's an elevation, a 3D view, or a floor plan. And so we have to set each one of those separately. And so what I'm going to do is use the same element set parameter, but we need to add that three times because in this particular case, we're dealing with elevations, 3D views, and floor plans. So we need to set the value of those parameters for each of those. So we have the view type group and then we're going to plug that into the parameter name for each of those three. So we can use one code block for all three of those. And then for each of the values, they're going to be different. So in this case, if we do it in the order that they're listed here, so elevations is first, we're going to turn on caps lock, and this is going to be exterior elevations. And so that is the parameter value for our elevations. And then we take our elevations here because we're not having the whole entire list. We're specifically pulling just the elevations and plugging them into there. And then for this one here, the next one on the list is our 3D views. So we're going to call this 3 
the views, and that gets plugged into the value here, and then we take the 3D views from here and plug it into element. And then lastly, we've got our floor plans. And that is the value for the last one. And then we take our floor plans from here and plug them into element. So the way this works is that this block of nodes down here is controlling the view type. All of this that's going on over here, basically this here is changing the view use. And then sort of in the middle here, we have determining if a view is on a sheet or not. Now, this definition looks very sort of confusing and a little bit all over the place, but we can simplify that by grouping these things. So for example, this is selecting our views. This is part of that selection, and then it flattens the list. So what I'm gonna do is take those three nodes select those three, and then right-click on one of them. It doesn't matter which one, but right-click on one of them and say Create Group. And then what that does is it puts those nodes into a color box. And up here, I can click on where it has that text, and I can say Gather Views. And then I usually like to bump up the font size on that so that it is much clearer. And you can also change the color. So for example, change it to orange. And then once that's in a group, you can move it around as a single entity. So you can organize these things sort of within the group, but then if you need to move it, it moves it as one object. Now it has absolutely no impact whatsoever on the individual nodes themselves. It's just purely a aesthetic organizational tool. When I'm creating definitions, I like to put things into groups because it helps me identify what the different nodes are doing and what they're doing in combination with one another. And so these are all the nodes that are gathering up our views. And then basically this collection right in through here, this is determining if something is on a sheet or not. So I'm going to select all of these nodes, right click and say create group. And this one I'm going to call is view on a sheet because that's essentially what this group is doing. So I'll change the font size and let's change the color to something else, purple. And then within these groups, you can still move the nodes around and make it a little bit more clean in terms of how they're arranged, but then you can also move the group as well. And then down here, these are all the ones that have to do with changing the view type parameter. So we'll create a group around that, and then we'll call this change view type group. And make that a larger font. And we'll just leave that at that color. And then the last group over here is right click create group and then change this name to change view use group and then we'll change this color to blue when you're looking at this just graphically it helps identify what is involved in creating this definition and what each of the different groups of nodes is actually doing. This is especially helpful on very large definitions, and it just helps you identify what pieces of the definition are doing what. But now that we've got all of this, let's go ahead and run it, and then we'll go back into Revit. Now remember in Revit, all of the views were under question marks in the project browser, and now when I go to the project browser, you can see everything is where it should be, except there seems to be a problem here with the exterior elevations. Let's see, why is that not? It's still under the question marks. So let's see, it's the view use. Because I accidentally had this under both of the in, this should actually be in the out. So let's run that again. There we go. Now everything is the way that it should be.
So the problem there was that I had both of these nodes plugged into what was true, where this one should have been plugged into what was false. And so I get the two different lists. And so that's why it was still under question marks in the project browser. But now it's working, so everything's good. And that's how you can organize your project browser. And if you are using a definition like this and you have all of your various views defined here and you have a very simple project browser organization, you can periodically open up this definition, run it on a project, and make sure that all your views are where they need to be. Now, if you have a more complicated project browser organization, it might be a little more difficult to continually rerun it. Maybe in the beginning of a project, you can use this to kind of keep things organized.